All right, let's get started. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to our webinar today. Thank you for being here. Uh, today, we're going to cover how to manage and automate certificate fulfillment with ServiceNow. Um, this is part of our ITOM Visibility and Governance webinar series uh, that we are hosting on the third Tuesday of every month. So at the same time, so as you are here today, we will invite you back to one month from today for the next session. Now, this webinar is part of the live on ServiceNow webinar series on the community. Uh, this is a curated series of events across multiple ServiceNow areas, right? Not just ITOM for what you're here for today, uh, but certainly also for ITSM, HR, ITOM, ITAM, and much more. Uh, so we invite you to please attend these to learn how you can easily implement and adopt more features that you are entitled to. Just a bit of a, you know, of a few housekeeping rules here. Uh, everyone's line is muted, so we ask that you please use the Q&A feature to ask questions throughout today's session. Uh, and when you do ask a question, uh, please feel free to introduce yourself, who you are, what company you're with. So we'd love to get to know who you are. Uh, we're going to have a, a two polls today, so we ask that you please per, uh, participate in those polls. We are recording today's session, and it will be posted um, on the community um, as a follow-up. And then finally, after our, uh, this session ends today, you'll be prompted to fill out a survey. Uh, we always appreciate your feedback on how we can improve these sessions for future. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Steve Emerson. I'm the outbound product manager for ITOM Visibility here at ServiceNow. And as an outbound PM, I wear many hats, right? Product evangelism, um, you know, help customers with their you know, value realization, as well as I do some internal sales enablement. But that's just to name a few things, right? But what I love most about my role is being able to speak with customers and hear how you're using our products and I get to share how we, you know, how you can use our ITOM products to help you achieve your business goals. Uh, I've been at ServiceNow for five years now, uh, but I spent the bulk of my career working across a multitude of disciplines in IT, uh, in large IT organizations. So I know what it's like to be in your shoes. Uh, I have managed certificates before um, as a customer, uh, and it wasn't a fun job. <laughs> uh, I'd like to kick it off first with a poll. Um, what we'd like to understand is today we're going to be talking about certificate inventory management, right? Can you just tell us what is your experience with this application, right? And just choose one answer. If you could launch the poll, Shamil. So first, you know, response would be, oh, ServiceNow does that? <laughs> We've looked at it. Um, we're in the process of, uh, of implementing it or we're using it in production. Let's just take the next uh, 10 or so seconds to answer that poll. And I see a lot of answers coming in and I really thank you guys for your support here. This just helps us get to know the audience and how we can structure this webinar better. All right, still see answers coming in. I think we're good, Shamil, we can end it now. So it looks like, um, you know, a lot of you didn't know uh, that we do certificate management. So it's good you're here today, you'll learn all about how we do that. Uh, some of you have looked at it, um, about, you know, the most of you actually have looked at it. Uh, some of you are in the process of implementing it, and we have, a, you know, a few customers that are in production. So thank you for your responses there, and we'll go ahead and proceed with the uh, presentation here. All right, so why are we here today, right? The challenge of certificate management, and I can tell you this myself, right, because I've done it before, is, you know, across any organization, there's just increasing number of certificates, right? And they're typically purchased or may, maybe even managed by separate businesses, right? You know, business units or departments. They all own their own applications. And it's very difficult for the central IT team to keep track of all the certificates because obviously when they expire, you've got some big challenges there, which we'll talk about in a second. 
right? So it's a cumbersome process for tracking all that. And, you know, whether or not you have active ones or, 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 or inactive ones, I personally used to use spreadsheets and I was only told, you know, about certain certificates from, from other departments. I had a good understanding of what I had, but necessarily get, you know, gathering data from others was a very big challenge. And it was always that manual process for renewing the certificates when they were about to expire, right? So what happens when a certificate expires, right? You could uh, look in the news any day and you'll see updates about, you know, security risks or, or outages because of certificate expirations, right? Um, huge, it's a huge issue across the industry today. Um, and of course, for the IT staff, it introduces a lot of manual and complex uh, processes to take care of. So ServiceNow has a solution for this. Um, it's called Certificate Inventory and Management, and it really helps customers prevent outages for, from expired certificates. And if you're familiar with ServiceNow Discovery, right, this is a layer on top of Discovery that helps you to discover your entire certificate estate via three methods. And we'll go into details about all these methods as I go throughout you know, today's presentation. Uh, Port-based, uh, uh, certificate authority-based, and URL-based. For the certificate authorities, we have five that we support out of the box, which are DigiCert, Entrust, GoDaddy, Sectigo, and Microsoft. And we, we then populate all those certificates into the CMDB so that you have an accurate record of that. And if you discover with a port-based method, we'll be able to tell you exactly where that certificate is installed and be able to also see the, under, the underlying relationships back to other dependencies. Right? Uh, we provide customers with an option to use standardized request forms for requesting new or renewed certificates. Uh, this really helps you standardize on the data that you collect and the process that is followed for that with tasks. We help you visualize your entire inventory um, with a single pane of glass dashboard. We generate proactive renewal tasks up to 60 days prior to expiration uh, by default. And we'll talk about how we can change that if you want. Uh, at the same time, we also uh, um, integrate with, you know, natively with our incident process and also with our event management process to generate uh, you know, events and alerts for expired certificates. And we also integrate with uh, Slack uh, for notifications as well. But, you know, as part of ITOM visibility, which is where certificate management lies, you also have access to service mapping. So if you have your services mapped, which is where you understand how your components impact the, you know, are, you know, support the business, you'll be able to tell how a certificate supports the business, right? So if, Certificate ABC is going to be expiring 60 days. You can understand which how that impacts my business, right? So, this solution is going to help you overall, you know, reduce risks, improve your processes, speed up the process, and help you prioritize. As, as a follow-on to that, uh, we also introduced automation. Um, back about a year ago, we introduced the you know the ability to automate certificate fulfillment. Um, to specific uh, certif certificate authorities. We continue to grow that list of CAs, but today we support DigiCert and Entrust out of the box. And for this, it's a, I'll explain how it works, but I'll show it to you, of course. Uh, we help you visualize the workflow automation trends in a single pane of glass dashboard so you can understand what is the value of this solution that I have invested in, right? Uh, you can understand, you know, we help, we provide uh, out-of-the-box catalog items for new, renew, and revoke, right, to start the automation process, to collect the data needed to process the request. We then have a routing policy that processes that request to the certificate authority. And then automation kicks in for new, renew, and revoke requests to execute the automation directly to the CA. At the same time, we create a change request uh, to ensure governance of that process. Uh, and then uh, finally, right, of course, the CMDB is updated. We, we pull back the certificates from the, those two CAs, DigiCert and Entrust. We attach them to the task records, and we also store a copy of those certs in the CMDB. Um, and of course, you know, here you're going to be able to speed your time to fulfillment. You're going to have governance processes, and you're going to reduce risk of human error. 
Last poll before we get into our demo here. Uh, we'd like to understand which of the cer certificate authorities does your organization use? And this is a multi-select here, so please go ahead and select which ones you use. There may be others that you use, but we're specifically focusing on these here today. Keep it coming. Thank you all for your for your participation here, guys. Uh, all right, Shamil, you can go ahead and end that poll. So it looks like the bulk of you are using Microsoft, followed by DigiCert and Entrust, right, and then. GoDaddy, Sectigo, GlobalSign, and Let's Encrypt all have some usage. So thank you guys uh, for filling that out. And we can stop sharing that poll, and I'm going to go ahead on to our next section here. So how do we get started? You go to our certificate inventory and management application, like a lot, like most of the ITOM applications, are available now via the ServiceNow store. Uh, we have shifted to the store for new applications and, and feature updates because uh, it, it allows us to be more agile and get products and features into your hands faster. Um, so go to the store to servicenow.com, do a search for certificate inventory and management, and basically you click on get and you tell it the instance you want to put it on, and then it validates whether or not you have an entitlement, of course. Uh, and then once you have that that approved in your instance you'll be able to search for it if you go to applications all search for certificate inventory and management and then you'll be able to click install or update my was already installed so mine says installed but yours will say install or update and then once the app is there you're ready to start using it and now i'll get into the actual demo so i'm going to go through these areas here and as you guys have questions please feel free to ask we have uh Sri, who's my colleague, uh, he is the product owner for Certificate Inventory Management. He's going to be answering your questions online. If there's anything you guys feel, uh, Sri, that needs to be kind of brought up to the whole team, please let me know. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to walk you through how to set up discovery of your certificates uh, for port-based, CA-based, as well as URL-based. I'm going to show you how to configure the, the lifecycle notifications. I'm going to kind of walk you through working through tasks for certificate renewals. I'll walk you through how to set up your instance for automated certificate fulfillment. And then finally, I'll walk you through how to request and fulfill certificates with automation. So let's get into the instance. OK, um, so for certificate for port based discovery, this is the method that uh, during your regular discovery scans, you can turn on a port probe. It's essentially a switch to start discovering your certificates. So any certificates listening on ports, your discover our discovery scan will pick that up. It's not reliant on credentials, right? As long as we it's listening on a port, we can query that and pull back the certificate information. So it's this TLS SSL search ports probe, port probe, and I'll change my scope here for a second to be able to edit this. What you'll do is you'll click active because it's 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 um, not active by default when you install it. Activate it, and then here you have an option to select which ports are 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 discovered by default out of the box. We provide the common ones, or we enable the common ones, but you have the option to. Uh, Turn on any of these 139 out of the box, and then if you don't see the port number here that you have a cert listening on, you could certainly add it to the IP services table. So that's how you set, so that's how you turn it on, right? That's very simple, straightforward. We, now let's look at a discovery schedule. So in your, I'm, I'm first I'm going to pull up a regular discovery schedule that discovers configuration items, right? Which is something that customers run on a regular basis. Um, these, these configuration item discoveries look at an IP range. They go out there and scan a subnet or multiple subnets looking for specific um, 
you know, devices that are, you know, that are there, right? So we turned on the port probe, and now when we run this discovery, it will start to look for certificates as well. So as you can see here, this one runs daily at 3 a.m. And there's no other settings here for certificates, right? So if I take a look at um, a most recent discovery run from last night, I can see here in the log that it has captured certificate information, right? Captured certificate chain, populating for certificates, right? So, so this is what we like, you know, we, you know, we encourage you, if you haven't tried this yet, download the app, install it, uh, in, you know, in your instance, turn on the port probe, start discovering certificates in subproduction, just to get a, a, you know, a look and feel, get the certificates in the CMDB, start to see the value that you start having there. So that was a simple straightforward for, um, you know, setting up the port-based discovery. For the, for the certificate authority discovery, uh, the first thing we need to do is create a credential. Uh, for those of you familiar with credentials in ServiceNow, um, we have a credential type called certificate management credentials, right? This is the credential that you will use to connect to your provider. Now, in this case here, I'm going to show you an example of DigiCert. Now, for each CA that you choose, there'll be different uh, values on these fields, uh, on these forms, depending on what your provider requires. Um, so here, the CA type is DigiCert, and it needs an API key, okay? We get the API key from our DigiCert system. I'm going to show you an interest one later as well. So we also create something called a credential alias, which allows us to choose to use this credential specifically in other areas of the platform, which I'll which will, I'll touch on as I go out this this demo. So we have the credential, we have the credential alias. Now, how do we discover the CA? If we go into my certificate discovery schedules again, I'm going to look at the DigiCert CA discovery schedule. Now, this discovery schedule, we're not discovering configuration items like we were in the previous one. We're discovering certificates. Then there is a choice of certificate discovery type, right? There's a, there's a few options here, right? But um, URL discovery I'll touch on in, in, in just a moment. Uh, but CA discovery is, is what you want to choose here. Uh, this one also is, is also running every day. Now, but how do we tell it that it, to discover a specific um, certificate authority? On the bottom here, there is an option for serverless execution pattern. Now, ServiceNow uses patterns uh, when it discovers things in ServiceNow, right? So not in service now, but in your environment, right? So, and to quit, it's, it's essentially a set of instructions to query for additional information to gather the configuration of those devices. So this pattern that we want to use for this one is the DigiCert pattern. And within the DigiCert pattern configuration, you can specify the credential alias to be used. This tells us that this we want, to use, we want to discover DigiCert with this schedule and use this credential to do that. And there is one more area that you should know about is your mid server. In order to do CA uh, discovery, it needs access to these uh, URLs, right? So depending on which one you're discovering, uh, these are the public URLs. Uh, so make sure that, you know, in addition to the credential, setting up the discovery schedule, your mid server has access to these URLs because it's not going to work otherwise. So let's take a look at a, how we discover, uh, what comes back in discovery when we do a CA discovery. So here we said we're running this every day. So I will look at last night's discovery schedule. 
And there's a log, of course, that shows us information about certificate information. But here, we are. there's actually a tab where we're actually showing you which certificates were discovered. Now, we have 46 that were discovered directly from the CA last night. The difference between discovery, the port-based discovery and this uh, CA discovery is the CA discovery will just pull in every certificate that you have on your CA so that you can start tracking lifecycle information. What CA discovery does not do is it does not tell us where it's installed. That is the real, that's the reason why you want to run port-based discovery so that you can understand where it's installed because certain certificates are installed across multiple systems, right? So if you have a renewal coming up, you need to know where exactly that's installed. And I'll, talk, I'll touch on that in just a moment as well on how we can see that. So pretty straightforward. Uh, that was the how you set up the certificate authority based discovery. Now let's look at the URL based discovery. The first thing that we do is we need to create a record in the certificate source URL table. And I've created some already, um, Amazon, Walmart, Netflix, ServiceNow. And I'll show you what you need to do. It's very straightforward. All you need to do is um, put in the URL that you want to discover, right? So what I usually do is I go to my browser, open up the website, copy exactly what it says there, and I pop it into that URL field. So you've created a record that this is something that I'd like to be able to discover with ServiceNow. And then we also have to create a discovery schedule in order to do that. So I'll go back to my discovery schedules. I have one for URL cert discovery. So you know, once again, we are discovering certificates. We are choosing the type of URL certificate discovery. Now note that this does not require credentials, right? So you could discover any public website that you want. You could discover any of your public um, you know, websites or internal sites. You don't need to have credentials for it. You, you could also include URLs from the endpoint table. So if you have your, if you have entry points that you're mapping services from, you can um, also click that button. You'll start to see all of them populated automatically. So here we have a URLs tab where we would edit which URLs we want to include in, in, the, in the run, right? You may have multiple schedules that you want to discover different URLs and different times. So we give you the option to only select a subset. Now here I have all four of them already loaded in there. So I'll cancel out of here. And I will look at a prior discovery run from last night. And we can see here that we have discovered, if I look at the certificates tab, I've discovered the four certificates for the URLs that I've added. Right, so I'll briefly, before I, I do that, I want to show you here net, the um, Netflix website. Every website, if you click on the little um, you know, lock icon, you can gather information about the certificate. Here we see that theirs is by DigiCert. It, it, um, it expires on J uh, January 14th, 2023. So if we go back to our ServiceNow instance and we look at the CI that was created for the certificate record, we see the issuer was DigiCert. We see the valid to date is January 14th, 2023, right? We also, you know, collect a bunch of other, you know, relevant information, subject alternative names, organization, and all the standard things you would have in a certificate, right? We see also that as soon as a certificate is discovered, you have the option to assign it to somebody, right? And I'll talk about, you know, assignment in just a moment as well, but. The other option here you have here is to choose what type of renewal tasks are created. Uh, priority one tasks should be used for those that are most important for your organization, right? So, Nef so if I'm Netflix.com, I mean, if I'm working at Netflix, Netflix.com is a priority one, 
you know, task for me. So I could set that there and I can save it. And from you know, going forward, anytime uh, 60 days prior to expiration of Netflix.com, I'm going to receive a priority one task, not a priority three task. Uh, you could also choose to not create renewal tasks. Let's say you have a certificate that you've acquired for one-time use, uh, or maybe something that is like self-signed and, and they automatically renew themselves. You don't have to create renewal tasks for those. So that was um, certificate URL discovery in a nutshell. We also have an option for you if you'd like. Um, Let's say you have certificates that are not discoverable. For whatever reason, they don't listen on ports. Um, they're not part of a CA. You can manually um, import those into ServiceNow. So we provide a bulk upload feature where you can download a template file. Open up the template here. It's a sample data. You could certainly clear this out and populate your own data in here, but it gives you all the information that you would need, all the fields, I should say, in order to what we need to create the record in ServiceNow, right? So at least, you know, it's not gonna be real-time data, but, you know, it's going to be accurate data, and you're gonna be able to track the life cycle of that certificate uh, inside of ServiceNow, along with everything else that you're doing. Uh, so that is, uh, that is a way to solve that challenge of non-discoverable certificates. Now, once, once you discover certificates, where do they go, right? There's a table called the Unique Certificates Table. Uh, for, for those of you who like to know CMDB table names, it is the CMDB underscore CI underscore certificate table. In this table, there is one record for each unique certificate. Um, now, that's important to note because you know, this is where we we generate the renewal tasks from. This is where we track the life cycle, right? This one certificate might be installed on five different systems, but there's one record of it in this table. Now, as you can see here, we track life cycle state. So if I group it by state, I see that we have revoked, issued, and installed, right? Installed means that we've discovered it with, with port-based discovery or a URL-based discovery, typically, and we know where it's running. Um, issued me, you know, could be an example of something we've ingested from the CA that we don't know if it's installed or not. So you would have to set those to installed yourself if you know that they're, they are, in fact, installed somewhere. Um, and then also there's revoked. Right, which are ones that we have decided that we no longer need, right? And with the automation process I'll show you later, that process becomes automated uh, as well. Now, installed, there's a table for that as well. So there was a, another, with installed certificates, these, this is a table that shows you where a particular certificate is installed. Now I've got a bunch of empty stuff in here. I've got some demo data in here that doesn't really look that accurate, but in some cases we do have very accurate data. Um, so for example, here, this, you know, NGIX 3, you know, 636, we have this installed on this CI, right? So you're able to understand where it's installed and then um, be able to, if you had one certificate that was installed in multiple places, you would have one record in, one entry in this table for every instantiation of that um, installed certificate. So that's the difference between unique certificates and installed certificates tables. Just, just remember that everything is driven, like the task creation, the lifecycle management, that's all driven off of the unique certificates table. The, the next thing we wanted to talk about today was configuring the lifecycle notifications. So we will do that in discovery definition properties. At the very bottom of this, so th you know these are all your standard discovery properties that you have uh, choices to set, right? But towards the bottom, um, you, we added the certificate management discovery properties. I'll talk through all of these here. 
So here is where you set the option to of, of whether or not you automatically generate a task for Discover certificates that are going to be expiring. Uh, so if you first install this, you may want to disable this feature to get a handle on your certificates. Um, maybe you don't want to start creating you know, renewal tasks right away, but you want to just get a handle on your, your life cycle. What that looks like, I mean. And then also, the next one is creating incidents for all expired certs. So when you first turn this on, you may find that you have a lot of expired certs, and that's okay. Right? Um, in some cases, it, it, it will be okay, but in, in others, it might be a problem, I guess, right? But you could turn this off as well. By, by default, they're both on. Here, I mentioned earlier about Slack channel integration. So if you have Slack, you can configure an integration between ServiceNow and Slack. And you can set up a channel to be notified of upcoming certificate expirations or any notifications at all for, cert for certificates. Uh, beyond um, setting up the notifications, uh, here is where you would set the number of days prior to where you generate the renewal task. So 60 days prior is what we defaulted to. You could set it to whatever you'd like. Um, down here we have the, admin, the, the user ID that will be used for when you create an incident record, who the caller field is for that. So by default, we give you a certificate administrator. You can change that if you'd like. So the other area is if you have event management, we, can, we, we also automatically integrate and create alerts. So this is, if you go into Flow Designer, go into Subflows, search for anything that contains CERT, and there's a, there's a subflow called CERT Event Management that is active. If you deactivate this, it will not create alerts. Uh, but if you wanted to create alerts, just leave it as active. And you could certainly go in here and look at the details of that uh, process flow. We're not going to do that here because of time. But so far, we've talked about how to set up discovery, how to run discovery, how to set up uh, notifications. <clears throat> now that we're all set up, right, let's start to work through some of the task records. So I'm a PKI administrator. And my, this is the dashboard that I'm going to use on a daily basis, right? There's multiple dashboards here, actually, right? Um, the task records will automatically be, of course, emailed to folks if you have email notifications enabled in your instance, which I believe most customers probably do, right? But you may get push notifications as well. But this dashboard is a great way for those who are responsible for certificates uh, can manage them, right? And of course, everything in ServiceNow is role-based, so you can configure this uh, to only see the ones that you're responsible for. This first tab talks, uh, it, it's focused on the tasks, right? Here I see that I have 31 uh, upcoming, I'm sorry, in the past renewals, right? So I've got 31 expired certificates that I have to address. Maybe they're not all legitimate, right? But I have to kind of address them all. I have one priority task, one one priority, one task right now that I should be actioning, and then 36 total renewal tasks. So, so this is what I was telling about earlier, right? When you set the task priority, you got priority one, priority three. That's everything else. So the ones that are most important, set them as priority one so that you could track them very easily in this tab here, in this widget. And I've got um, 36 in total, like I said, and zero open new request tasks. This is my upcoming expirations, which, you know, but it also includes some stuff that's already expired. But as you can see here, it breaks it down by critical versus moderate, so P1 versus P3. The next dashboard, uh, a tab, is your um, inventory. So this is a, these are all the certificates that I have in my instance that I'm tracking. Typically in your whole environment, uh, not just your instance, right? So I've got 236 certificates that I'm tracking. Uh, I'm sorry, that I have discovered. 236 that I'm tracking for renewal, right? Remember I said earlier you can turn off renewal tracking. Um, you may want to do that, but right now I've got it turned on for all, for all of them. 
um, I've got two that I'm tracking with priority one, right? And this <clears throat> and I've discovered 75 in the last 30 days. And I can see by root issuer, um, what are the biggest root issuers that I have, right? Um, here I can see that other is my most common one, but <clears throat> excuse me one second. But <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to working through a task. So I've looked at my dashboard. I know what's going on. I'm going to go into this priority one task because this is the first thing that I should do. Now, like any other task record in ServiceNow, you know, it's got an, it's got an assignment group. It's got a priority. It's got a state. And as you can see here, this task number was created for this unique certificate. And it's a renewal type. It's got an assignment group and an assigned to, right? I'll show you one second where that, where that comes from. And the priority is priority one. If we look at the certificate record, we can see where certain fields came from on that task. We can see that the assigned to is Steve Emerson. We can see that the change group is certificate owners, right? So when you run your certificate discovery the first time, all this is going to be blank, right? You're going to have to fill in or assign your certs to owners and also groups. Because if you don't, then, you know, all your renewal tasks are going to go to one bucket. And that's fine if your organization operates that way, but you likely want to get down to some level of granularity with assignment. Um, here I can see on this certificate, the subject common name, the issuer, the state, right? But the valid from and the valid to, right? This is actually already expired in the past. But, right, when I talked earlier about certificate discovery and understanding where it's installed, I already see some downstream relationships here. I see that it's used by an HA proxy and this host. Um, but let's look at this more in a dependency view. Here we see the unique certificate, and then we see the relationship to the Linux server, and then we see the relationship from the Linux server to all of its components, as well as the HA proxy to the relationships to its components, right? Here's, you know, um, and if I were to expand the number of um, levels in this map, you would see that it goes out to different applications, different application servers, things like that. I mentioned earlier about having your services mapped. If you have your services mapped, you can understand the impact of this cert on your business. So there's this related services tab when I click details. It shows me that if I don't renew this certificate, it's going to impact this locomotive maintenance service and this partner event production service, right? So I know that these are the services that are impacted by this certificate because I have invested the time um, to automatically map the services, right? And once again, mapping services means that you start an, um, at an entry point, typically, and you understand exactly uh, what, what components are part of that service. Uh, we could certainly have another, uh, um, we have a, a topic coming up on this later this year, but you'll be able to, you know, we have videos on service mapping and get a better understanding. So that is how you work through certificate tasks, right? The kind of the day in life of a PKI, PKI admin, looking at the dashboard, working through tasks, understanding, you know, how does this certificate impact not only, uh, just, you know, other systems, but maybe other, you know, what my business services, for example. So that's how we work through certificate tasks. The next step I'm going to show you is how you set up automated certificate fulfillment. We don't need this dashboard anymore, or this one, or this one. All right. So the first thing we have to do is go into a property to set up the um, this automated approval group. Um, I'm sorry, this default approval group, right? So if there's any tasks that get created as part of the automated process that require um, an, you know, um, an approver, this is the default um, group that will be used. 
but you also have the option to set that as part of the um, as part of the process when you actually re you know request a new uh, certificate, which I'll show you. The next thing we need is a credential. So I'm going to show you this Ntrust credential, and once again, it's the the, the certificate type is a certificate management credential. Now we chose the CA of Ntrust. And for Entrust, we need this information, right? The password, the key store. Um, and we also created a credential alias, which we'll use um, very shortly. The next step is to create a certificate authority record, which essentially all it has, and, and you know, you, you can name this whatever you'd like. This is the certificate uh, authorities table. Um, and all this, these tables and all these instructions are also documented, guys. So I know I'm going through this kind of fast, but you know, reference the documentation for where these things are specifically. Um, but anyway, here is the base URL that is going to process the Ntrust automated fulfillment requests. Okay. That all that is needed for to set up that routing policy, which I talked about in the, in the flow chart. The routing policy, and you could have multiple routing policies per certificate authority, dependent on the criteria that you see here on the screen. Now here is where that credential alias comes into play. We're saying that this routing policy needs this credential alias to authenticate to Ntrust, right? The certificate authority, we created that record earlier as well, uh, the Ntrust CA gateway. Right, it, this is where it's going to process that request, and then Ntrust requires, you know, this authority identifier, this certificate profile, right? So that's information you would get from the Ntrust console. The assignment group, I've left it as the PKI approver group. Uh, like, like I said, you could change that for specific uh, routing policies, um, but I've chosen to leave it the same. What's important here is that you. You know, for PKI standards, right? You don't want to set the maximum validity period more than 365 days. It's the best practice right now. Um, and also, right? You also probably want to turn on approvals um, so that PKI admins are processing or reviewing requests for new CAs or no, I'm sorry, new certificates or renewed certificates, just as a best practice, right? I don't have it turned on for demo purposes, for, you know, for the approvals, but you get the idea. And then down here is where you would set up the um, common name information, all the details about what common names are going to be processed by this routing policy. This is more of a wild card, but you could certainly set up individual um, routing policies um, for different uh, subject common names. Um, and then that is where I mentioned you could have multiple routing policies per um, certificate authority. All right, so we've set it up. Now let's go through the process of requesting new, renew, and revoke. So like anything else, um, like any other request in ServiceNow, we start in the service catalog. There is, this is a very blank catalog. The only thing it has in here is certificate management. Yours is going to have a lot more, obviously. Uh, but there's a category called certificate management. And then within there, we have two subcategories. We've got manual, which is the manual process that I described first. And then we've got automated flow, right? The manual, there's just the new and renew, right? There's no automation behind those. Those are just standardized request forms that you can use um, to set up. If you're not using automation, you can still use those to set up a process to request certificates in, in your organization. But we're going to go through automated flow here today. So we have these three catalog items for requesting automation. <clears throat> New, renew, and revoke. This bottom one here, revoke, is only accessible or visible to those that have a PKI admin role in ServiceNow so that we don't just enable anybody to ask for a certificate revocation. There's got to be some uh, kind of oversight to that process, right? Um, so I'm going to go through a requesting of a new certificate. And to do that, I'm going to copy a CSR. 
So typically when you request a certificate these days, or, or not just these days, but any day, you need a CSR, right? I was doing this back when I worked in corporate IT, when I was a server admin. Um, <clears throat> as soon as you click out of the, the box, there's validation as to what that is. If it doesn't look correct, you can just stop right here and go back to the drawing board and figure out what went wrong. But let's just assume this CSR, the data looks correct. I'm going to go ahead and, and keep going here. You can choose to um, change the validity period to something less than 365 days if you'd like. Um, but we recommend you don't set it higher than 365. You have the ability to uh, select applications, application services, or application servers that this certificate will support. And they'll be added to the certificate record in the extensions table. But these are the important fields here. This is where you choose the owner group. So I've, I've set up a group called certificate owners, and then I'm going to assign it to myself. So I've got owners, myself, and then you can choose what you know what environment this is for. I'm going to leave it as development. And then what what type of task do I want to create when this is up for expiration? So I'm going to say I'm going to create priority ones. So as soon as I click submit, it's being processed by the Ntrust routing policy. That's because the data that was on the form matched the routing policy. And there's automation happening right now that's going out to uh, Ntrust to make that happen. States completed. If I refresh the form, you will see that the certificate record along with the, the chain of certs needed for this are attached to the form, the task form. And they're also stored in the CMDB. Now, if I'm the person who requested this, I can download these and go and install them on the actual host, right? We don't um, deploy to the actual hosts. And as I mentioned at, uh, about the change request, change requests automatically created and related to the task record to ensure governance. So now your change, pro your change management process can take over. Um, so that's the new request. Let's go ahead and do a renewal request. I'll get the CSR for that. So here we have to choose an existing certificate right um, so I know that it's assigned to Steve here's the one I just requested and then uh, it tells us when it expires right and then uh, we put in the CSR click out once again there's validation on the right hand side the, the maximum validity period so all the fields are the same except we don't ask again what type of tasks you want to create because we carry that over from the original certificate but we will uh, put in here the owner group and the owner. And I'll submit that, and it's beginning to do the process behind the scenes to end trust. It's completed. <clears throat> Once again, I refresh it. And here are, the, here are the new certs. Simple as that. Now you can go ahead and deploy these to the hosts. The change request was created. The final one is the revoke request. So here we don't need a CSR, of course. We need to select an existing certificate. I'll pick one that's assigned to me. This is the one I just processed. And we've got to put a reason in. No longer needed. Here we get an additional prompt that asks, do we really want to revoke the certificates? Say yes. Automation kicks in. It's already completed. So it's gone out to Ntrust. It's revoked the cert. If we look at the certificate details, state is now revoked. Right? The and then it's also now revoked on Ntrust. So, and then we also have, if I refresh the form, change request was created. <clears throat> Just note that for uh, for revocations, we create a 
emergency change rather than just a normal change. The final thing I'll show you with this is the dashboard where you can where you can track your automation over time. Now we have only started to use this instance in July, so I, I, I only have July data. But as you can see here, all the open requests are all zero. That's intentional, right? Because we're using automation. You would have open requests here if you were waiting for approvals, but that should really be the only reason why. You are processing things automatically. And over time, this middle chart here will start to show you how many you're processing through there that, and being able to actually move away from manual requests. And then we can see here the number processed by interest and by DigiCert. We are adding more CAs to this in the future, so stay tuned. Um, so let's go back now and finish up with a couple of resources. So Shamil, if you can pay, uh, paste these resources in there, that'd be great. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel, um, ServiceNow Community YouTube, that has tons of great information about how to. Um, these are just three videos that, that are around certificate management. Um, this one that we're doing today will also be put there. So you'll have this video as well. Um, but uh, we'll, we're going to attach this uh, slide deck to the community page as well. We encourage you to submit your ideas, right? So and if you have a certificate authority that you want to see added for automation, add it, you know, add it as an idea. When something gets 10 upvotes by 10 different unique customers, our product managers start to take action. So please go to the idea portal on the community and begin to uh, you know, add your ideas or upvote existing ideas. Now, ITAM visibility, right, that I showed you today, we talked about certificate inventory and management. It's part of the suite of applications that help you gain visibility across your entire state. And over the next um, several months, we're going to be doing demonstrate, I'm sorry, um, webinars on all these different topics. Last month, we did one on um, ACC, which is our agent client collector, right? This month, we're doing certificate management. And then I'll show, I'll show you in a moment what we're doing next month. But uh, with that said, um, are there any outstanding questions, team, that we need to address here live? Or were there any, uh, Shri, were there any press, or, or, you know, were there any common questions that you feel that we should um, kind of bring up to the entire, or, you know, team here? Yeah, I see two prominent questions, uh, Steve. Firstly, a fantastic session. Thank you. Uh, the, there's a lot of questions around licensing. If you go back to the previous slide, uh, uh, you need item visibility subscription in order to unlock certificate management. Please reach out to you know, your ServiceNow contract uh, to validate what kind of subscription you have. Uh, if you still have the old node-based discovery SKU, talk to your account rep you know, and upgrade to the modern SKUs that will unlock all those uh, capabilities. There's another question on the certification, certificate relationships. So if you can open up the relationship record. Sure. So the discovery of certificates uh, can happen with multiple methods, as Steve uh, showcased, uh, a TCP IP port-based scan, uh, URL-based scan, uh, connect, you know, connecting to your F5 load balancer and identifying all the deployed certificates there, or even using patterns uh, uh, that will allow you to directly connect to the certificate authority vendors for the data collection. And we have created two different uh, schemas, uh, I would say, uh, where if you show me the record, uh, Steve, uh, right click and show me the record of the unique certificates. Uh, so the first table that you're going to see is the unique certificate table, which actually identifies the record. Then you'll also see an install certificate table. So if you use multiple techniques uh, to discover the same certificate, you're going to see multiple records created in the install certificate table. Uh, but we will still have one unique certificate record uh, so that you can use you no know, uh, multiple techniques for the discovery and inventory data collection. But for your task automation, for your uh, 
uh, PKI, uh, no life cycle management activities, you still need to work with the unique certificate record. So all our workflows of notifications, everything happens via this uh, table. Uh, can you also show me, show that uh, dashboard of uh, the pipe, you know, the expiry pipeline? There's another question around how do we track the expiry 60 days? Uh, if you show show me the dashboard. Yep, I'm getting to it. Yep. The cert management uh, properties will allow you to set up uh, uh, you know, proactive notifications or reactive notifications. The proactive notifications are, are primarily geared towards like uh, uh, you know, 60 days or 30 days before the expiry, you wanted to send a Slack or you wanted to create a workflow task for the requester to you know, to submit their CSR request. So that's something that you should encourage your uh, you know, PKI team to do. But if, uh, so Steve, if you would show me the second tab of the, the you no, know, the dashboard. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, second tab. So <laughs> here you see this upcoming certificate expiration which again will show you the expiry pipeline for the next 12 months. And you can click any of those months and you'll be able to see the list of certificates that will be expiring for that specific month. And if you have set uh, the priority one versus priority three, right, that also gives you more credible ways to work with the critical certificates that is super important for your customer facing, external facing infrastructure compared to maybe a certificate that is deployed into a test lab or an R&D lab, uh, no, where you can still like, uh, no, track them with the priority three task. Uh, uh, so the workflow itself provides you complete flexibility to configure uh, no, these uh, uh, settings. And also, as I said, on the re reactive side, if the life cycle state of the certificate has not renewed, and if the certificate has expired, then if you have event management plugin, then we will create a critical alert and then critical incident. If you don't have event management plugin, we will just create a critical incident. So the incident records will be automatically created. If the certificate is still there in the server, and if the certificate lifecycle activity has not changed, it is still in install state, and the certificate has expired. So with that, Steve, I'll hand over the floor to you. Thanks, Sri, and thanks everyone for your questions. <clears throat> so call to action today. So visit our store, download the certificate inventory management, try it out in subprod. You know, it's, it's very easy to turn on, as you saw. Use this video as a, you know as your way to do it. Showcase the value that you see to your stakeholders. You just get them excited about it, right? And we're here to help, right? If you have any questions, ask your, you know, ask us on the community page. We'll get in touch with you. Um, and then finally, share your success story with us. We'll, you know, tell us what you've done. And then if you have it in prod, we'd love to know what you're, you know, what value that, that you're realizing. And finally, we'd like you to join us next month, um, August 16th, uh, same time, 9 a.m. You know, Pacific, 12 a.m. Sorry, 12 p.m. Eastern where we're going to be talking about Cloud Center of Excellence Part 1, how to gain business context of your cloud resources. Um, thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.